How do everybody? Nigel back here again, and I've got another inbox review for you. And today we're going to be looking at Gecko's uh, Late War British Army 4x2 Heavy Ambulance. So this one is the third one that Gecko have released in 135th flavour. Uh, the first one had a figure of the Queen, but as you can see, this one's got a a private sort of figure. I think it is. Yeah, so, uh, so a driver, actually driving it. Uh, the second one was in the desert scheme with a, uh, again, with a driver figure, I think it was. And as we can see, we've got the decals and photo wedge, as well as four markings. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll put you on the overhead and we'll get cracking. So we'll start off with the instructions. And as you can see, it's quite a, a fit booklet. Lots of information going through. On the front, we've got a little bit of write-up uh, about uh, the the ambulance itself. On the first first and second page, we have some safety information on there, and on this page, we've got the screw map of all the bits and pieces for the actual kit. We then move straight into the build by starting with the chassis. So you've got your chassis rails, uh, the suspension. I don't know at this moment in time whether that's rear or front. Moving on to the next section again, we've got some more suspension and then some more rails and things going on to the chassis. Then move on to building the diff and the what looks like the rear axle. Okay, and then adding the wheels on. There we see adding the wheels and the hub caps. Okay, and the brake discs. Before then we start moving on to building what looks like the gearbox well it says it there gearbox okay uh of the actual kit before we then move on to the uh, engine that engine that gets mounted to the gearbox okay which then gets mounted to the uh the drive shafts which get mounted to the uh, rear diff then we have uh, another set of piping which could be what looks like the exhaust from the engine going out to the rear, as shown just there. Uh, some of the cross members on the actual uh, front wheels, okay, before we then get the uh, another set of crossbars and uh, steering parts by the looks of it. We've got some more parts for what looks like the brakes okay going on to the front before then we mount the front wheels okay and then you can see you can turn the wheels in whatever direction you so wish before then we look at moving on to two fuel tanks and mounting them onto the chassis we've then got a uh, a tailboard okay so you can see these steps just here okay with a foot wedge that goes on there and that'll be, I would assume, to climb up into the actual uh, rear of the wagon. We've then got the radiator grill going on the front with the radiator getting mounted onto it. Before then we start looking at the actual front fenders and the seat going on to what just looks like an ammo box, believe it or not. Okay, so the seat going on there. We've then got the, uh, the deck uh the cargo well not the cargo <coughs> the the cockpit part deck of the actual uh wagon and then point all the steering wheel the uh the different pedals and stuff like that onto the actual uh lower part of the front section before then that gets mounted to uh the the rear part of the bonnet or the nose which then this gets mounted onto that platform <coughs> okay and then we've got the the headlights that's what they look like anyway before then we mount all that onto the actual chassis with a bracing uh, frame going forming a triangle through the um the bulkhead to the radiator grill uh, we've then got the side walls getting built up and ready uh, with latches for 
the side of the engine and then the bonnet attaching to the side of the engine and then all that getting mounted actually onto the front of the wagon okay so then you end up with something like this we then move on to a bracing bar at the front uh, and some fuel tanks and don't know what that is some other odds and sods okay which then get uh, are all ready and then we have the rear platform of the actual wagon and also some uh, already in there we have uh, in the kit we have two stretchers then we, there we are we've got water and fuel tank and they go in underneath the tailboard okay so just there you can see they go underneath the tailboard ready to be uh, for the driver or the crew to be able to grab it then that platform gets added to the chassis and then we can start looking at putting some rear fl mud flaps on and what have you on both sides uh, and leaning up against the the water cans so that's what it should look like then putting the tailboard on okay so this is where your lights and whatever will be and then we start you building up the the rear of the actual box body so the bit that goes on the back we've got the the door and the rear section going on with some louvers on there and what looks like some blinds so they can uh, if for whatever reason they are traveling at night they can lower them down and the people inside can still have the light sorry that's not the rear that's the front of the box body so there you can see they're going behind the the cockpit so that means a driver and passenger can get access into the compartment behind. Um, we then add a seat onto the rear of the door, okay, leading actually into the box body. We have a spare tire. Looks like it goes behind the driver somewhere. Uh, not a great picture. But it'll show you, you can just see it just there. Then we've got some rails going in. These are probably where the stretchers are going to sit, uh, which you can see there. So we've got stretchers and we've actually got cots on there for any injured people to be able to actually uh, sleep on if need be or whatever. Yeah. Then we've got the roof of the box body, I hope okay it looks like it is because then we move on to adding all these uh, boxes on to the bottom of the roof we've got another section of the roof that joins onto it with the vents that go on there before then we move in to start building some more cots by the looks of it okay so these cots will go above the other ones where the stretchers sit just like what they are there so like uh, bunk beds okay going on so forth oh, let's just go back a few steps so it's showing you there the cots going on there all right so that's just a seat for seated uh, the actual bed bit goes on the higher part of the uh, goes on the higher part of the actual uh, cot okay so you do have a lower and a higher one so yeah my mistake you can see actually there the cot there and they join together the roof will go on so you'll have four actual beds in there like so in the back and you've got different configurations because you can have the them down or up and there would be a chain that winches them up uh, we then start building the front of the cab and the front of the roof which goes on there again we've got the windshield okay with a wiper on the roof of the front part then we've got the doors okay uh, either folded up or not okay so we'll see how they've done that part in just a minute Moving on to putting the rear doors actually onto the wagon. So you've there got a complete box body. Okay. 
and then we've got another part of the exhaust and what looks like some folded um, stretchers where they go I don't know and then we've got the driver and all his paint call outs and then we move on to the uh, different options. So option one is 175 fuel ambulance, the RA uh, MC, uh, the 31st Highland Infantry Division. Okay, then we've got option two, 147 uh, field ambulance, uh, 34 Welch, Welch Division. Okay, in Germany, April 1945. Then we've got the motor ambulance convoy, 30 core. Uh, Holland 1944, uh, British Red Cross Society, uh, Mulberry Harbour, Gold Beach, July 1940, and that's it. What I didn't see is any call out of an entire black flat bike SCC2 Brown, SCCC 15 British. Ah, uh, okay. Excuse me, fellas. I didn't see any through with any sort of colours within here. I don't know whether there's anything more in there, but we'll have a look at that. But nothing really that tells me about any sort of colour call outs. Feel that is me. We'll crack on. So, starting with some of the smaller screws. Okay, so we've got one part here. This is for the where the wheel sits so when the, wheel, the spare wheel goes in this is the bit that keeps it in there we've got some nice detail i can feel some nice raised detail on there we've got the strap for the cover <coughs> we have some what look like potentially hub caps okay for the wheels just there which again which are nicely done nice raised detail We've then got two of the same sprues, so I'll just put them all away. And we've got some of the wheels, some of the boxes, some of the fuel tanks, uh, not, yeah, fuel tanks, and what have you. Okay, so you can see these wheels here. Okay, they've actually got writing. If I can just cash it in the right, going around the rims. Okay, I'm, I can't read it at this moment in time, but Dunlop. Track grip 10.50.16. That's quite good. Okay, so they've actually given you the proper sizes. And then again, as we look around, we've got some nice uh, strap detail, okay, on the fuel tanks and stuff like that. We've then got two, another two exactly the same. And these two again are the water tanks and part of the fuel tanks. And again, they've got a little marking on there. Let's have a look if you can see it. Yeah, I think it's got the fuel type. So in the army, you would have some of these for diesel, some of these for petrol, uh, some of these for kerosene. So you would have the different types of fuel on, on the side. Okay, we've then got the handles for the fuel tanks on there. Next one, again, we've got multiple sprues in here. So this one, we have got the seat, some more of the boxes with some nice raised detail on there again. We've got texture on the seat cushions, okay, which you can see just there. We've got texture on the uh, one of the blinds, okay, so these are one of the blackout blinds that get pulled down. We've then got two sprues that have got the cushions and the part of the stretches on. So again, on the cushions, you can see some nice detail on there and there. And then we've got a rifle. Okay, the rifle's got a slightly hollowed out uh, barrel. Okay, some louvers. Again, all looking very, very nice, all as it should. We then move on to the cockpit decking, uh, the cockpit rear bulkhead, and the the front part of the front bulkhead of the cockpit just there. And again, you can see some nice, lovely detail on there. Uh, the louvers are really nice. Some nice planking detail on the wood 
wooden floor uh, so you can go to town with doing your wood detail uh, again another seat there with the cushions on and the rolled up uh, blinds just there and again no flash no nothing spade all really really nicely done Then they're looking at parts of the box body. So we have got uh, the part that sits, that bit sits just behind uh, the cockpit. Okay, we've got the roof, which is canvas, and you can actually feel the texture on that part of the roof. Same as on this part, is it canvas? Well, that bit, it's like a, a non-slip texture on there. So I'm assuming that must be, no, my mistake, it's not canvas. A solid part okay you can feel the non-slip actually on that pit and that pit and on this bit you can hear it's not it's not so the roof with the nice uh, vents on there uh, again we have all the screws to fasten these metal strips up to fit the roof on and then we move on to the actual um sides of the actual uh, cab itself the box body so this bit is the internals so you can see the actual um bit used to wind the uh the the higher stretches down these bits will all be covered up so that's not an issue you can actually see and if i run my nail on it i don't know you can just hear that you can actually feel the actual uh winding mechanism on there turn it over and again we've got this non-slip texture on the outside of some of these parts okay we have the canvas doors here so the clear part will go on the top we have the rolled up part so that bit there will be the rolled up part uh, that sits uh, when the doors are open another part for the wheel there to keep it all clamped in Then move on to some of the cockpit parts and the engine parts. Okay, so we have got the uh, the bulkhead of the cockpit. We have got the front wings, the radiator grill with a nice rendition of the actual uh, manufacturer, the Bedford's uh, manufacturer, the Bedford. I think it is. Okay, the actual. Uh, wings there and then we've got the top of the engine some nice louvers again some some lovely little details some nuts some nuts on there uh, all really really well done no flash to write home about really really crisp you can see the hen engine hinges just there which they will might meet up with each other We've got the main part of the chassis, okay, uh, the diff, uh, some engine parts, okay, so we've got the chain here, uh, we've got the main block, radiator again, with some texture on there, okay, like a radiator should, we've got the exhaust and the front and rear suspension as well as other odds and sods, and again, all really nicely done, really well moulded, nothing no i have not found any uh injector pin marks where they don't need to be so really well done so far next we'll move on to some of the other plastic gray plastic parts so we'll start with the with the wheels just get one out for you okay to look at as you can see some nice tread on there the only problem is if you if i can get it to because you can just see either side of the wheel okay so that side and that side you can just see a a a, a mold line okay so that's might be quite difficult to get rid of unless it's on the real tires which i'm not sure it would be next we've got four of the same these are the sprues for the actual uh, stretchers and some seat 
bits and pieces so we've got some seat cushions we've got the stretchers when they're, they're out the stretchers when they're folded up and some clips to to mount the stretchers in and again some nice fabric texture on there and again we've got three parts here so we have got some of the parts for the driver so we've got his helmets okay um some looks like he's due to have the straps down and you see these two here they've got the straps up over the rim and then we've got some of his kit down there even a little pair of binos and that's the only time just there that i've seen any flash on this kit the only time We've got some more of his kit here. Again, this bit's got a, a lot more of a flash. So I think this is probably an older uh, older kit, maybe. Okay, so you've got some of his, uh, his pouches at the back, different configurations. You've got a, a roll map there. You've got his canteen. Uh, you've got some of his ammo and stuff like that all on there. All different types. We have three different types of rifle. Okay, well, we've got two of the same and then the stub machine gun. Just looking at them. They are different because we've got different barrels. Okay, uh, probably different. Um, oh dear, they are different. Uh, different gauges. Okay, all on there again. Looks, looks quite nice. And then we've got the actual fella himself okay uh one with a, a baryon one with a uh a what are those one of those flat flaming caps you know with the peak caps without the peak on what they are i can't remember what they're called okay separate hands and again this is the only place where i've seen any real real flash we've then got the clear part and there we can see the uh, windshield, some other parts, the doors with the correct uh, waviness on them because they would be uh, well, the plastic of the time or the, the clear acetate of the time. OK, so they would be ripply like that. OK, they won't be super clear like this because they weren't uh, glass. OK, uh, they were a flexible, clear plastic. But they look really, really nice. So I've got some grills on the headlights. Moves this on to the photo etch and the decals. And in here, we also get a bit, was it in this one? Or was it in, in there? A, a bit of string. Yes, it's there, look. Okay, a little bit of string up for some tubing. Okay, the foot wedge looks really nice. Doris Blinder, okay. Some grills, some uh, bits for the stretchers and all that sort of stuff. And then the decals. Again, they look really, really nice. The only problem with these decals is going over, if I remember rightly. Let me just have a quick look. Yes, he's going over the venting. Okay, so some of these, okay, the bigger ones here will go over these venting. So they might struggle to go over them. So you might want to get yourself a paint mask or another set of decals. So that's Gecko's late war British Army uh, ambulance, heavy ambulance, should I say. Looks a really, really nice kit. The only thing that lets it down is the figure parts. Uh, they're a little bit flashy on some places, uh, especially on those binoculars. But other than that, overall, a really, really nice kit. I can't see me building it, but if they ever release this in 48, it would look uh, great, especially if it was a, an early war one. 
it would look great inside of any aircraft uh so a diorama or whatever where the pilots have been injured or or, or whatever okay um this would go nicely with the border models um 135th scale aircraft that they're fishing out and to a certain degree you might be able to offset it so much a little bit with 30 second maybe um but other than that uh this one make would make a, a good model to go in a, a convoy on a diorama or something like that anyway that's it for now i hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you in the next one bye